All right. Um, thanks again. Uh, and let's welcome on Michael and Pia and Hirtian. Same, same deal. We're going to just ask each of you to do a couple minutes of kind of overview of what it is that your project is, and then we'll get into some conversation. So, um, Michael, would you be up for sharing a bit about Front Porch Forum? Sure, I'm glad to. Thank you, Eli. Um, uh, first, my name is Michael Wood Lewis with Front Porch Forum. I'm a white male with black framed glasses and short brown hair and a cozy flannel shirt because there's snow on the ground here in Vermont. Um, yeah, so Front Porch Forum. My wife Valerie and I started Front Porch Forum as a, a project uh, 20 years ago. And it uh, has continued to the point where now we employ 20 people and we're on our third software platform. We are a mission-driven small business. Our mission is to help neighbors connect and build community. We do that by hosting uh, what is a statewide network of online neighborhood and small town forums. We've, uh, I'm an engineer by my background, not, not a coder, but um, I, I work at the intersection of community and, and, and tech. And, but with a very um, large bias towards local and, and small and decentralized. Um, and uh, we've made dozens, hundreds of um, small design decisions over the years that have led us down a very different path than, um, well, for example, one of our big tech imitators that you, you, you may be aware of. Um, so our, our basic concept is uh, people sign up uh, for their local forum and they, once a day they'll get an issue that arrives via email or our website or our mobile app and it's got postings from neighbors and uh, we also include local officials and um, small businesses nonprofits can participate if if they're local and you know the average issue might have about 10 postings uh, they might average uh, a paragraph or two in length. Um, it's not uh, emoticons. It's not LOL type stuff. It's it's more more substantive. Um, and you know the most uh, compelling content uh, tends to gravitate towards the top. It's uh, lost pets and cars for sale and people seeking plumber recommendations um, and people announcing. Um, you know, a protest gathering, a town hall for, for whatever, or, or debating the school budget, really just about anything. Um, a couple key differences from our, our, our approach. Uh, there's no anonymity. Um, uh, you know, it's like wearing a name tag uh, and showing up at a block party with your neighbors. Um, also, every posting is reviewed by our staff of online community managers before publication. Uh, yep, so we're not a venture capital scale up to take over the world type of model. Um, we're, we're, uh, uh, our whole intent, <clears throat> excuse me, is that our members will spend five or 10 minutes a day on our service, not hours and hours. And that will um, inspire them to have engagement in the real world. Before the pandemic, that meant conversations on the sidewalk. Um, now it you know, takes other forms. Um, but it's all about uh, building connection among neighbors. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, let's go to Pia. Pia, can you tell us about Open Collective? Open Collective is a platform that um, enables communities around the world um, to pull money together to raise funds without needing to create their own um, legal entity or their own bank account to do it. So essentially, we provide open finances tools for communities to be independent. We are very bullish about the role of communities um, in the world, the impact that communities have when they um, manage to get their ideas to life. Um, and we want to support them by, by enabling them to unlock access to economic resources. 
And so Open Collective is a platform, it's an open uh, finances platform um, that allows them to manage budgets transparently and manage their expenses and receive contributions. And at the same time, the other piece of the puzzle is a network of um, organizations around the world that act as the custodians of those funds. Right, so we enable thousands of communities um, through this network of organizations and through the Open Collective Platform to um, receive funding. Last year, uh, the communities on our platform managed to access um, $15 million in funding. Um, so it was it was a very, obviously with COVID um, and a pandemic, the number of mutual aid groups that we were able to serve and support um, was just incredible. Um, it was obviously a very tough year for everyone, but really seeing people showing up for each other in that way, the amount of funds that they were able to raise, the amount of communities that they were able to support was just incredible. Um, so, so yeah, that's what Open Collective does. Awesome. And last but not least, we have Hirtian uh, Bogerts uh, from the Netherlands. Thank you very much. I'm really, really inspired by all these uh, fantastic alternatives that I'm hearing. I mean, we have all become so dependent upon services being rendered by Google and Facebook and Amazon, etc. And um, we're all looking for ways to to escape kind of their um, their their grip on on our digital lives. Um, and I think a common problem that that many of these alternative tool sets face is that it's often very hard, if not impossible to achieve a kind of network effect, to get the kind of scale up that you need in order to really get some traction and uh, acceptance by the, by, the, uh, by the broader public. Uh, a lot of times they need more marketing punch and uh, a public acknowledgement that, that actually um, those are better options to use. And I think that's where public spaces come in that I represent. Uh, public spaces is a coalition of about 25 Dutch organizations, public broadcasters, cultural institutions, uh, public libraries, museums, festivals. We've even got Wikimedia Netherlands in our coalition. And altogether, we represent or we reach about 75% of the entire Dutch population. So um, the coalition shares basic public values such as transparency and accountability, openness and autonomy. And we want to um, uh, contribute to building a more ethically sound internet. And we feel the best way to do that is that we can build on our strength, which is uh, uh, our reach, our, our public reach. We can mobilize our very large audiences, this 75% of, of the Dutch population to start using these alternatives. So in short, public spaces is about public values and public adoption of alternatives. Um, currently, uh, we're in the process of, of working on a mapping tool set. This uh, means that we are making inventory of tools that we are currently using within our own digital environments, our websites and our apps. Um, and we're auditing these tools on three different sets of criteria. The first one is what are we actually using them for? Is it for gathering comments or uh, logging in our users or for tracking audiences? Uh, is it to perform some kind of analytics magic or for sending out newsletters? So that's one category of questions that we're trying to answer. Okay. The second category of criteria is, is to what extent uh, do these tools adhere to public spaces values? Are they open source? Are they transparent? Do they give the end users some kind of uh, control? Are they user friendly? And finally, uh, the third set of criteria, uh, are any alternatives available that score better on these values? Um, and if not, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of functional value do they provide? Um, can we work with their creators? Can we perhaps you know, plug into the open source community to help, help adapt and replace the old with the new? So we are in the process of, and hope to, to replace Google and Facebook authentication with Irma, uh, substituting Discus for the call project, moving away from Facebook and use, for instance, uh, FriendCamp and uh, do away with, with YouTube and move on to, to Peertube. Um, and as we're talking, we're gaining some traction. We've been officially recognized by the Dutch government as of now and been asked to set up a national conference for a healthier internet. We are very excited to organize it. And there's now also a European spin-off. So we're talking with um, our friends in Austria, Germany, United Kingdom and several other countries. So it's kind of um, scaling up and, and we'd love to extend the discussion even more to uh, you know, uh, an even broader international audience. 
Awesome. And um, please do, I know you're organizing an event around this uh, in the spring and would love to share that with folks um, if that's something that's open to open to more folks. Yeah, I would love to hear from each of you just briefly. Um, you know, was there a moment or, or something that um, that that sent you on this journey? I know each of you have interesting ways of that, that you came to what you're doing now. Okay, shall I start off? Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, I think the main driving force was for, for, for us, I mean, I work at a public broadcaster myself, um, and we're making a lot of shows, documentary shows, for instance, uh, that are very critical of our current digital ecosystem. And it feels very hypocritical, you know, to, to produce journalism uh, that's critical about, you know, data and privacy and so on. And while at the same time, we're dependent and we're, we're using ourselves, uh, Google and Facebook. Um, so I think uh, the, the main motivation for, for most of us, for most of our coalition partners at the very least, was that we um, want to um, help ourselves uh, by being, becoming less dependent upon these commercial platforms, uh, by promoting uh, open source alternatives and start using them ourselves. Great. Pia, can you yeah, share? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I come from politics. Um, that's kind of what I used to do. <laughs> Maybe I do that. I still, <laughs> I don't know. But um, everything is politics. Um, but I actually come from um, building a political party and running for elections um, in Buenos Aires, my hometown. And, um, and I guess um, what we were trying to do at the time was to kind of change the system from within, essentially running for office and trying to figure out ways of opening new spaces for civic engagement and participation and like rational, you know, um, citizen <laughs> debate. And we hit a wall, a very clear wall, um, that is that we were naive. We were trying to ask the status quo to give us permission to transform the status quo, right? We, we, we failed to understand the nature of power, that power is conservative. So from then onwards, um, I started thinking, um, how can we start building outside of um, our current political institutions, our current systems, um, namely the nation state? And so we started thinking about what structures are there, what structures can we build um, that support us as a global community of peers that we share the same commons that is this planet. And so kind of one of the, pro we had several approaches to, to on this, but the one I'm Open Collective does is um, we notice that communities, so our economic system, our financial system understands corporations that speak corporation language and that they operate in a scarcity driven economy with those assumptions. And also the system understands the individual, right? The person that is freelancing and they understand what it means tax wise and they understand what it means like economically. What our system does not understand is a community with economic power, right? Because if you're just a group of people from different places in the world that come together and you have a shared mission, you essentially, in order to have money, you need to become something that you're not. You need to incorporate somewhere in the world. You need to establish a hierarchical structure. You need to have some sort of ownership or some sort of um, um, hierarchical leadership. And, and what we were seeing was that we are circles and we are trying to fit in a world that is made for triangles. So instead of doing that, we started thinking about how can we build platforms for circles. And collectives are circles. Collectives are groups of people, no matter what they are, that they come together and they're able to have funding as an organization without needing to become one. Great. And Michael, what about you? Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, our, our story goes back a long time, a couple decades. And it wasn't about here's some cool tech, what can we make with it? Um, what can we do with it? It was about uh, a realization that we needed more resilient local communities. And the, the surest way to, to do that is to increase social capital, is to get people more connected, more involved, more bought in, knowing each other. And so we looked around and we, we tried a few different things, you know, uh, 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 monthly potlucks and, you know, different, you know, cool things, but oh, it was a lot of work and it was hard to, um, get anything that stuck. 
And then we started thinking more about, wow, people are checking their email. This is 20 years ago, every day. What if we somehow got in that channel? And we built from that. And uh, we've continued to build from that. Um, and so now we have, for every 1,000 households in Vermont, we have 750 members. So we just have unheard of traction and people show up for the free and simple and the everyday stuff. But then that social capital starts to build. And before you know it, they're, they're plugged in um, to a park cleanup or to helping out the homeless shelter or, or what have you. And then when crisis hits, and we've had no shortage of that um, in this world the last year, especially, um, people are better able, communities are better able to respond. Awesome. Um, I wonder if, uh, you know, we've had a lot of conversation over the last couple of days about what's local and what's scalable. And, um, you know, it strikes me that you know, we have, I'm curious to hear, you know, how, how much is Vermontness intrinsic to, to what you're doing uh, with Front Porch Forum? How much is, you know, being, being based in the Netherlands give a kind of ethos of what, what um, public spaces is up to. Um, PA, you've worked in a bunch of different geographical settings. Like how much, how much does that matter versus how much are these like anyone anywhere could do these projects? I, I can start on that if that's okay. Um, yeah. You know, when we started our effort uh, in our own neighborhood, people said, well, that's great. It'll never work anywhere else in, in greater Burlington. Uh, it won't work, you know, in the different sides of town. And then we expanded it and it worked in everywhere. And they said, well, that's fine. That's Greater Burlington. That'll work there, but it'll never work in the rural areas. It'll never work in the, the poor old shuttered mill town. Um, and it's worked in all those places. Each, each experience is quite different. Um, that said, other folks will come to us and say, we have to spread this and take it everywhere. And I said, I don't know how to run how to design Front Porch Forum in the suburbs of Phoenix or in you know, Miami. It, it needs local knowledge and local um, leadership uh, to tailor it to local needs. I think from, from my perspective, um, a prerequisite would be that there's some kind of tradition of, of having a public sector um, that's being publicly funded on the one hand, but uh, being politically autonomous on the other hand. So uh, it's somewhere, you know, in, it's, it's a kind of perhaps a European tradition, uh, you could say, to, to have a, a strong public sector like that, like public broadcasters. I mean, we're completely autonomous and independent. There's no political pressure in most of our European countries, at the very least, to produce a certain kind of, of, of content. Um, uh, there are statutes and laws that, that kind of govern that. But still, you know, our funding comes from public means. And um, I think that kind of lays the, the groundwork for uh, another kind of thinking about, about how we could rebuild or renew the Internet. The BBC was one of our talking partners in, in the Public Spaces Coalition. Um, is uh, running a program right now called Public Service Internet. Um, and uh, we're talking with other public broadcasters as well. And uh, I think that's a fruitful um, you know, uh, layer upon which to have to have your discussion, uh, which is not not directly or, or, or completely probably uh, transferable to uh, other types of societies that have completely different uh, traditions. Um, so for me, I guess I'm I'm a big believer of thinking outside of the territory, um, outside of the constraints of the territory, maybe because I moved around so much, but also because I have a deep belief that having a voice in this world shouldn't be an accident of birth. So everything that I work on, everything that I try to build is, um, at least I believe that is for everyone to use regardless of where they are. And um, so of course, kind of the local communities and um, they, they have impact, at least for example, in Open Collective, um, but it can happen everywhere. And I believe that we should build tools and build um, the scaffolding for um, initiatives like these to pop up around the world. 
it shouldn't we shouldn't be constrained by where we are. Cool. Well, I wonder if we could uh, do one final round on. Um, you all have thought about kind of um, community building um, and different approaches to community building from very different angles. And I wonder if you could just share one element that you think is under understudied, under considered when people are thinking about this. I, I, I'll just say um, the human element of implementation of uh, you know, we never uh, imagined Front Porch Forum as being um, fully automated. We always saw it as a human's job to pull together neighbors into conversation and the tech can help facilitate that. Um, and, and I think that thinking gets, it, I just wish that thinking was part of Silicon Valley. I can relate to that very much. And I, I, I think I'm an admirer of the work of Tristan Harris. And um, what I think is going to be a, a really big challenge is to um, develop and design uh, features and functionalities that are you know, as easy to use and as, as user-friendly without becoming um, addictive or without you know, vying for attention and, and um, playing a part in this attention war. And, and I think a, we need a lot more design thinking in that type of, in, that type, in those types of directions. Um, it's a tough question. Like, so for me, um, I guess the, the one element um, that I think we don't think enough about is this idea of stewardship. Like we should consider ourselves like stewards of our community. So we don't spend enough time in how do we make ourselves redundant? How do we remove ourselves from the equation to make place for another group of stewards that is going to take over? And those transition mechanisms are always, it can be tricky. They can be difficult um, communities. Um, and thinking about stewardship, I think, makes um, the resiliency of our community. Thank you. Well, that's a beautiful note to end on. Couldn't agree more. Um, so uh, I want to thank uh, the three of you. I want to thank uh, our documentarian Paisley, who has been doing uh, this beautiful uh, painting in the in the lower section. And uh, ask folks it, it, one more time: get off get off mute. Don't leave me hanging here. And uh, help cheer our wonderful panel. Thank you. Thank you.